Hello and welcome to the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Alberta Education v. Access Copyright. Sam teaches social studies at a junior high school. All the students have a copy of the main textbook and the school owns copies of a number of other print resources. Sam wants to share excerpts from these resources with the students in his classes. Given that the school does not have a sufficient number of copies of these supplemental resources for each student, Sam photocopies the excerpts and distributes these copies to the students in his class. Is this copying by Sam of these short excerpts from copyright protected materials and the use of those excerpts by Sam students covered under fair dealing? Or would such copying and use require permission or a license from the rights holder? The case of Alberta Education v. Access Copyright addresses this very issue. In making its determination, the Supreme Court of Canada applied the two-step test that was introduced in the 2004 CCH case. The first step of the test is to consider the dealing in relation to the purposes listed in Section 29 of the Copyright Act. It is important to note that when the case was considered, education had not yet been added as a purpose under Section 29. The court found the dealing to be sufficiently related to research and private study to pass the first step and to move on to the second step for making a determination of fair dealing, which is the six-factor analysis. In applying the six-factor analysis, the first factor is the purpose of the dealing. While the dealing has a clear connection to research and private study, the court must consider the extent to which the purpose of the dealing tends toward a finding of fairness. When the Copyright Board made its earlier decision in the same case, it found that the copies made by teachers were predominantly for instruction or non-private study, and thus would tend toward unfairness. The Federal Court of Appeal agreed with the Copyright Board's decision that the copies were made for non-private study. A majority of the Supreme Court disagreed. The research and private study purposes of the students were found to be consistent with the instructional purposes of teachers. Teachers have no ulterior motive in providing the copies to the students. Instruction and private study were found, at least in the school context, to be effectively the same thing. The majority made it clear that the word private in private study should not be interpreted to suggest that the activity must take place in splendid isolation. Studying and learning are essentially personal endeavors whether they are engaged in with others or in solitude. The Copyright Board's approach to the amount of the dealing factor was also found by a majority of the Supreme Court to be problematic. The board had suggested that a teacher might make a large number of copies of the same short excerpt and that this would tend toward unfairness. The majority pointed out that teachers do not make multiple copies of the class set for their own use. They make them for the use of the students. The court also noted that the quantification of the total number of pages copied is considered under a different factor, the character of the dealing. The majority reaffirmed that the amount factor is not a quantitative assessment based on aggregate use. It is an examination of the proportion between the excerpted copy and the entire work, not the overall quantity of what is disseminated. For the alternatives to the dealing factor, the majority once again disagreed with the approach taken by the Copyright Board, finding that buying books for each student is not a realistic alternative to teachers copying short excerpts to supplement student textbooks. The suggested alternative was found to be all the more unreasonable in light of the board's earlier finding that only short excerpts from these books were being copied and distributed. Finally, regarding the effect of the dealing in the work, Although there may be some evidence that textbook sales had been shrinking in recent years, there was no evidence that this decline was linked to photocopying done by teachers. Therefore, the majority of the court found that the dealing by teachers, the copying of short excerpts of printed works and distributing those to their students, to be fair. It is important to note that the court was divided five to four on this decision. The central issue in the dissent was whether the Copyright Board had made a reviewable error. There are two different standards for judicial review. One is the reasonableness standard, whether or not the decision under review was reasonable. And the other is the correctness standard, whether or not the decision under review was correct. The standard of review for the court to apply to the decision of the Copyright Board is reasonableness, simply whether the board's decision is reasonable, not whether the decision is correct. The dissenting judges took the position that the board's application of the CCH factors to the facts and its conclusions were not unreasonable, 
and argued, therefore, that the appeal should be dismissed. Writing for the majority, however, Justice Abella concluded that because the board's finding of unfairness was based on what was, in my respectful view, a misapplication of the CCH factors, its outcome was rendered unreasonable, and therefore the appeal was allowed. The Alberta Education Decision confirms that, under fair dealing, Sam can lawfully reproduce short excerpts of materials and distribute those copies to the students in his classes. This allows Sam to provide the most recent articles to his students to keep his classes more current and relevant, which he hopes will help his students remain more engaged and gain a more rounded understanding of the subject matter. The Supreme Court decision was released in July 2012. And later in 2012, the Copyright Modernization Act came into force, which added education as a distinct purpose under fair dealing. The decision in Alberta Education v. Access Copyright was released at the same time as the Supreme Court's decisions in four other copyright cases. These five cases are collectively referred to as the Copyright Pentalogy. Alberta Education, along with the closely aligned decision in SOCAN v. Bell, another of the Pentalogy, is an important piece of Supreme Court jurisprudence that reaffirms and further clarifies the application of the CCH six-factor test. You should now be able to recount the circumstances and outcome of Alberta Education v. Access Copyright, identify the more significant factors in the fair dealing analysis that contributed to the decision, and outline the main issue from the dissent in the case. This has been the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Alberta Education v. Access Copyright. Thank you for your attention.